courage, your abilities, your accomplishments and talents, to the extent that you feel like a fraud, if you have, you might be suffering from imposter syndrome. And I'm sure you've probably heard of imposter syndrome. Um, the experience of imposter syndrome can keep you from realizing or recognizing your potential. It keeps you, holds you back. Imposter syndrome affects people from all walks of life, including entrepreneurs and executive, uh, executives and students and um, accomplished people who made significant achievements in their careers. Now, if I'm honest, I suffer from imposter syndrome myself sometimes. Sometimes I don't feel qualified or as if my expertise is good enough for a situation or an opportunity. And then I hold back. I may not put myself out there as a candidate for a speaking, coaching, or writing opportunity, for example, or I may not demonstrate you know, confidence about my capabilities. And that kind of excludes me from being chosen or hired. So if you're wondering if you have imposter syndrome, there are some clear symptoms. You might feel as if you don't deserve the praise you receive or your achievements. You may be afraid someone could expose you as a fraud. Um, you could often ask yourself if you're pretending to know things you don't actually know. You could feel inadequate, have a fear of failure, find it difficult to accept compliments. Um, you may believe you have somehow managed to, to trick others into believing that you're qualified. So let's be really clear about what imposter syndrome really is. It's a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud or a phony. And like I said, it can affect anyone regardless of their age and gender or professional experience and can have a significant impact on their self-esteem and motivation and performance. Now, most humans occasionally doubt their abilities or competency. It's a rare person who never has any doubt. And doubt is a natural feeling that often surfaces during times of challenge, like when you have a tough task to complete or a new job or get a promotion. And many of us undervalue our accomplishments or our skills and believe that our success is the result of luck or chance. And when those kind of feelings or mindsets become persistent and consume you to the point where you fear exposure as a fraud or a phony, the condition is classified as imposter syndrome. But you need to know that imposter syndrome is not a medical diagnosis. This is just a term that's used for this experience. Now, what causes imposter syndrome? The most common one is the pressure to succeed in our society, which really devalues failure. We've been programmed since childhood to believe our worth is primarily judged by our ability to achieve. And then we're deprived of the opportunity to learn and to grow from our failures. And we don't, we don't celebrate our successes. And our achievements are just kind of brushed off because we think they're expected of us, right? And so then we struggle to recognize our success at all. Social media contributes to this too because um, social media tends to portray people, the best of people's lives. And so it's easy for those who are on the outside looking in onto someone's social media platform to compare themselves to their peers on the virtual platforms and not feel good enough, right? Not feel good enough. So when I think about imposter syndrome, I think about how it holds people back. And so while, you know, the system, the symptoms of imposter syndrome are pretty un unpleasant, but it's the result of this condition. Um, if you have it for very long, that's worse because it holds you back. It stops you from enjoying the success you achieve. And, you know, you can't even acknowledge your success because even if you have evidence of it and it just holds you back in so many life arenas. And that means it's limiting your um, potential in a variety of ways, right? So let's look at how, how it holds you back or, or 
yeah, so how, how it limits your potential. Okay, so the first way is it creates procrastination and perfectionism. So that's how one of the primary ways it holds you back because it encourages procrastination and perfectionism, which lead to delays in completing things and you know overthinking tasks. And you know, if you doubt you're good enough to complete tasks, or you might be exposed as a fraud if you do, why would you jump right in and do the work and complete the job? It doesn't make sense. But instead, you would avoid the task or spend inordinate amounts of time trying to get the job done right. It also uh, is caused by fear of failure. So imposter syndrome off, often leads individuals to fear failure, which can create the cycle of perfectionism and delayed action, right? Um, sometimes the fear becomes so pronounced that it prevents you from taking risks or choosing to pursue any new opportunities. And there's also the fear of being found out. So if you're discovered to be an imposter, that represents another type of failure. And in a professional context, if you're actually discovered to be a fraud, it could result in the end of your career, right? So as a result of your fear of failure, you limit your growth and potential to move forward toward greater achievement. So it's holding you back. Imposter syndrome also holds you back because it leads to underachievement. So when individuals with imposter syndrome feel that their skills and accomplishments aren't real, right? They become less motivated, engaged, and ambitious. They, they be, you know, and, and then what happens is they become underachievers and they miss opportunities. And they have a general feeling of dissatisfaction with their, their lives or their work because they know they could do more. They want to do more, but they're underachieving. And so you may realize this, but underachievers feel challenged to succeed. And if they don't stretch and reach for bigger goals, it's impossible to reach their human potential. Also limits your networks. So imposter syndrome causes people to withdraw as a way to hide and avoid discovery. And so sufferers are, are reluctant to seek, ne seek networking opportunities or connect with peers for fear of, again, being exposed, being found out. So as a result, they limit the number of connections they make professionally, and that can lead to missed career opportunities. On a personal level, withdrawing can cause a person to feel disconnected from friends and from family, which can result into feeling alone and isolated, which leads to the next way it holds us back, which is depression and anxiety, right? So Imposter syndrome can lead to symptoms of depression and anxiety, as well as low self-confidence, low self-esteem, and trouble sleeping. And if left unchecked for a long time, the symptoms can have serious consequences on your career and on your personal life. So one of the biggest things that's happening with, with imposter syndrome is self-talk, okay? And we can change self-talk. So you're not stuck with imposter syndrome for life. You can change your mindset and cure your imposter syndrome and move towards your goals and not be held back. So identifying and acknowledging the existence of imposter syndrome can be challenging. But if you can do that, it's the first step to overcoming it. Because once you recognize that you're struggling with imposter syndrome, the next Step involves confronting those negative thoughts and challenging them. And, and that's really, to me, the real cause of this malady is the mental chatter criticizing you and claiming you're a fraud all the time. So to reduce your symptoms, you have to become aware of your negative thought patterns. <laughs> all the things you tell yourself about being a phony. So if you catch yourself thinking, I'm not good enough or I don't deserve this, you have to reframe those negative thoughts into positive self-talk, right? I am good enough. I deserve this. Focus on your strengths and your achievements and remind yourself that you have the ability and skills to overcome challenges and then acknowledge your accomplishments. If you keep practicing that over time, you're going to begin, going to, begin to feel a, a sense of worth and confidence and your mental chatter will become positive, reminding of you of your ability to succeed. So there are a couple other practical tips for curing imposter syndrome. One is to recognize and acknowledge your achievements. So, you know, it's imposter syndrome often stems from a belief that your successes 
are not deserved or earned. And so if you identify your accomplishments and give yourself credit for them, you lessen the imposter syndrome. So you can make a list, for instance, of professional and personal achievements and then reflect on them. And if you can't do it on your own, seek out some colleagues or friends who you trust and ask them to point out or acknowledge your skills and accomplishments and abilities, um, because that will challenge your negative beliefs and, you know, especially if they're objective. The other thing you can do is to take ownership of your challenges because everyone has challenges and setbacks, but instead of avoiding them or blaming them for your failure or your challenges, take ownership of them and then use them as opportunities to learn and to grow. And uh, by all means, recognize that failure is a part of learning and it doesn't diminish your value as a person. It doesn't make you an imposter. The third um, thing you can do, in addition to the ones I've already mentioned, is to seek support and feedback. So because imposter syndrome makes you feel isolated and alone, as if you're the only one struggling with this self-doubt, it's important to remember that everyone experiences imposter syndrome at some point in their life. As I said, even I do, right? So seek for support from friends and family or colleagues who can offer encouragement and feedback. And you're probably going to be pretty surprised when they when you discover that they see you in a more positive light than you do. And last is to practice self-care because taking care of yourself is essential no matter what for your mental well-being. So make that a priority to, to exercise, to meditate, to do your hobbies, to do things that make you happy and relaxed, to make you feel good about yourself because then you're gonna feel more confident. And remember that you are not an imposter. <laughs> you really aren't. Your brain is just telling you that. So it's imposter syndrome is a real and debilitating experience, but those feelings of inadequacy, inadequacy, I can't speak today, inadequacy are not rooted in reality. They don't reflect your true worth as a person or your abilities as, as a professional. They're just stories. They're your interpretations. In fact, it's your brain's interpretations. You're not an imposter. Your mind just wants you to believe that. So by taking proactive steps to address your imposter syndrome, you can build confidence in your abilities and achieve greater success and satisfaction in life. You won't be holding yourself back anymore. Ultimately, the key to overcoming imposter syndrome is to take control of your mental self-talk and embrace your unique skills and strengths and to see your accomplishments and then you can move towards your goals with confidence and achieve your potential personally and professionally. So I would love to know if you feel like you have imposter syndrome. Like I said, I have it sometimes. I would um, really like for you to leave me a comment down below and, and tell me if you've tried any of these tools or tips that you know to help you get over your, your imposter syndrome to cure it. Um, or whether you found something else that helped you to cure your imposter syndrome. Because I don't want you to be held back and you don't wanna hold yourself back. So it's so important that we learn to acknowledge imposter syndrome, to recognize it, acknowledge it, and begin to do things that help to reduce it and eventually to get rid of it altogether. <laughs> so leave me a comment. Let me know if you have imposter syndrome, if you've had it in the past, what has helped you to, to reduce those symptoms, okay? I'm Nina Amir, I'm the Inspiration to Creation Coach. I uh, am a transformational coach and a certified high-performance coach. And what I really love doing is reminding people that they are spiritual beings having a human experience and that um, by working with all aspects of who they are, spiritual and human, physical, um, that they can learn to be the person who can do all the things that will help them create what they want in their life. And reminding people that they are creators, that we all have a spark of creativity within us, which um, is divine. And that when we stand in our power and when we use our spirituality, our, our soul for guidance, and when we learn to navigate our mind and our brain in such a way that we can really focus on our intention of what we want to create, then we create. So it's by stepping into our best self, 
by being the person that we know we can be and want to be, that we create the life we want. And that's how we also feed our soul. So these are all things I talk about in the Inspired Creator community. If you're interested in um, becoming a member, click on the link above. Um, the Inspired Creator community is um, where I offer group transformational and certified high performance coaching and trainings and uh, where people gather who are seekers. It's where I, I say where seekers gather to learn how to live lives that feed their souls. So if that's of interest to you, click on the link above. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Um, just go on over to my website at ninaamir.com and reach out to me and ask away. I promise I'll respond. Until I talk to you next time, thanks for listening and watching and go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.